In this episode of Digging Up Positivity, we cover several big and small furry events with charities attached to them. Euroferns finally has a new location and the return of a very sly fox and dead bunny. And an awesome upcoming game starring a gator. And an interview with one of the driving forces behind the furry events in and around Ohio, USA. And stay till the end of this very video if you want to win a lovely t-shirt from me from my artwork tea store. But first, let's hop into the charities. Recently, word reached me that the Critters at Worldwide Fur Camp raised $1,269 for the YMCA Camp Carbo Guard, making sure that at least two kids can get a well-deserved, all-inclusive stay. I bet those wee ones will enjoy that. Their next installment will be in November this year. I will be sure to check up on them. From the UK we have Skittles, an awesome bird who unfortunately lost a friend due to cancer. During these dark times they got help from Teenage Cancer UK. Skittles decided to support them so they can keep on helping others like they did to his friend. He is setting up a group of streamers and they are continuously raising money for this wonderful organization. So far they've raised $147.67. Want to help along? Check out their links in the description below. And further in the USA, we had Entro New England, where over 3,500 furries raised $21,000 for two charities. Needs, who helps provide serving dogs for people with disabilities, and Youth on Fire, a drop-in center for homeless and street-involved youth aged 14 to 24, providing age-appropriate services on-site. And in Ohio, Shutter and his friends raised $400 for the Cozy Cat Cottage, a non-profit organization providing care for abandoned, injured and abused lost cats and kittens. Speaking of Shutter, he will be with us later on in this video. Anytime. Someday. There it is. At Entro Expo 8. 169 furries have raised $14,135 for Pivot, an organization dedicated to provide youth with temporary housing, food and more. The long-running furry radio station Radio Rabbit Hole has raised $3,336 for Give Kids the World during their fundraiser in January. And now for the Furniture and Business Rebuild Fund. No, seriously, that's it. Simple Nick, an excellent furry YouTuber who has a lovely commentary channel, has raised $185 for their friends who had a whole series of unfortunate events. And besides that, their 3D printers were stolen. So here we have artists helping artists. Stay awesome! And in Europe we have a relatively new convention, Scotiacom, who really made a smashing impression by raising $43,363.90 for the Hesselhead Wildlife Rescue. Now it is to know that this is more than the premier UK convention, Confuzzled, and Europe's biggest convention, Euroferns, last year. This is an amazing first year for this convention new charity liaison Scott Skunk. Will they be able to retain their very first spot this year? Time will tell, but I will cover the result on this channel and remember, no matter the result, we all win in the end, especially the charity. And an amazing member for Team Fastest Furs, Randy Kuhn, managed to raise $3,000 for the Trevor Project during two fun-filled days in early February. Alien Sheep VTuber Sera Proto is streaming for the World Central Kitchen, raising awareness and collecting funds for this organization that is helping people in Ukraine, but also on other places like that dreadful earthquake in Turkey. As we speak, they raised $72. As we speak, Nordic Fuscon is happening and they are raising money for the Otseret Zoo Rescue. 
and I will be doing charity doodles at the convention. But there is also a lottery and there are some big prizes. One of them is a wonderful collaboration I did with Paco Panda. It's a limited edition signed canvas print of me and Paco playing Monopoly. Fingers crossed for the Ocheret Zoo. It was a bit of a wait and things were a little bit unsure, but we finally have a new location. Euroferns will be held in Hamburg from September 3rd to the 7th and the new location is much more fursuit friendly than the old one in Berlin and because of several hotels in the area the capacity is a lot bigger. I am very curious how the first year in this location will go. A long time it was rumors about but seven years after Zootopia took the world by storm and after a very well received series on Disney Plus, Disney announced their uh, latest quartering earning that Zootopia is in development. Story wise, the Zootopia universe has plenty of possibilities and the miniseries already has shown so much potential for spin offs and whatnot. But one thing is for sure the countdown has begun after seven years of waiting. For a long time I've been quite a fan of side scrolling arcade beat em ups like Final Fight but also point and click adventures like Full Throttle and Monkey Island. And the people behind Cowcat Games decided to combine the best of those in what they like to refer to as punch and click. Brock the Investigator, where you are Brock, a gator who investigates. The graphics kind of reminds me of the 90s, which is a very good thing. And this game will be rolling into your consoles on March 1st. This month with Digging Up Positivity, we have a very good guest from Ohio, USA. A very big name behind the scenes, an organizer of many cool events. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? My name is Shutter. I am from Columbus, Ohio. I'm an anthropologist, or at least that's what my degree is in. I'm also a professional photographer, but I just like hosting events. Uh, they're fun. I like giving people a fun atmosphere that they can enjoy themselves in. You are one of those people that really make the fandom so much fun to be in. But how did you get to know of the fandom? Well, I discovered the fandom back in the original days of the internet when we used to have news groups. Uh, you know, it was basically a Reddit before Reddit was Reddit. Mm -hmm. um, I would stumble upon anthropomorphic art and I really enjoyed what it looked like. Um, over time, I realized some of my friends were fursuiters and we would hang out once in a while. And it just went on from there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I just uh, started hanging around my friends more and more often and they would tell me about Oh, you should uh, check out this con over here or this con over in this place. And for the longest time, I had known about things like Anthrocon and it always interested me, but not being part of a broader community, I didn't really know where to start. And then when I moved to Ohio, I realized we had a con here called Anthro Ohio. And I just started becoming more and more social with people, um, mostly through Telegram or Discord chats. It just kind of snowballed from there. Oh, that's really cool. And before you knew it, you were working on Bark Aid, which I got a wind of because of Hunt the Hound. Could you tell us a little bit about Bark Aid? Okay, sure. Um, so, a little bit of backstory with Hunt. Um, Hund used to live here in Columbus. He was one of the first furries that I met and would hang out with socially. And he was moving away from Columbus. And he had he knew that I had scheduled events for other communities. And he had asked me, would you mind taking over the fur bowl that I normally do? And I said, yeah, sure, it shouldn't be an issue. And I, I, I warned Hund that when he asked me to do that, that uh, it, it wasn't going to stop at just furballs. I was going to run with it and create bigger and better events for people to hang out with. And um, the barcade just came to me because I always 
try and figure out a way to do some kind of charity fundraising. Uh, I'm a person that believes that you should give more than what you have. And um, I wanted to do a meetup at an arcade bar. And once I realized, hey, we could do, we could make this into a charity event, have people bring in supplies or goods to donate to a pet shelter. Oh, I've got it. This is perfect. I'm going to call it Bark Aid because, you know, furries, we, we love our puns. Oh, yes. So besides this wonderful Bark Aid, what other type of events do you organize? So I do uh, fur bowls a couple of times a year. Um, mostly they're here in Columbus. Once in a while I will take them outside of Columbus, about an hour, hour and a half outside of the city to uh, Dayton where mm -hmm. a local fur owns the bowling alley. So that's a pretty good inn that we can go there and take advantage of his venue. Um, I do schedule a lot of uh, just social meetups where we can just go and have a good time. I do try and make them as accessible for everybody. Um, I don't ever want uh, physical disabilities to ever play a role in why somebody can't join. I don't ever want anyone to ever feel left out because they can't afford to be there. So um, occasionally somebody will mention in a chat, oh, hey, I'd like to go bowling, but I can't afford it. And I'll just message them and be like, no, no, you're coming. I'll pay for you. It's not a big deal. I'd rather have them there than have them sit at home dealing with FOMO because they can't afford $10. So yeah. last night I held a an event at a bar where I'm, I'm uh, pretty good friends with the owners of the bar. I do other events for different communities out there and uh, I, I've done, a, done events there before where we go there in the middle of the afternoon and just kind of have, you know, 50, 60 furries show up and they really enjoy when we do that. And uh, this time I approached them and I'm like, hey, if I find some DJs for you guys, will you guys let us take over the bar at night and have a dance party? And they were like, yeah, sure, come on down. And uh, I found a couple DJs to DJ for the dance party. Um, people showed up, had an amazing time. The owners of the bar really enjoyed having all of us there. Everybody that was there uh, had a blast. Everyone was dancing, having a good time. Uh, that sounds like an awesome event and memories to be made. And you're making sure that everybody can attend, that it's nice and all inclusive. I really appreciate that. But yeah. with this, seeing all those wonderful events that you did, what was your favorite moment? Oh gosh. Uh, it was the very first fur con that I had ever gone to. And it's actually not even a con. They listed as a fur meet, even though it's a weekend long hotel based uh, event. Mm -hmm. um, my friend Papa Wolf, who lives out in St. Louis, uh, he manages, I'm not exactly sure what his title is, but he's like the lead guy for Mephit Fermi in Memphis, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. um, him and I have been friends for uh, quite a number of years, and we would uh, put together a puppy play event at a local convention here in Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, him and I worked together and every year that we would work together he'd ask me you know when are you going to come out to Mephit I really want you to come out to Mephit and then after COVID happened and I started being more social with the furry community um, I decided to you know what I'm going to go out to Mephit because Papa Wolf keeps asking me to go out there and I see I think that that would be a good intro for me because I know people there and as soon as I told him that I registered, he immediately was like, fantastic, will you be our photographer? <laughs> oh. I, had a, I had a chuckle about that because I really did, did just want to go there as an attendee. But, you know, I, I like doing stuff for my friends. And 
uh, he knows that I'm a photographer. It always goes to events to do that for them. So we had a good chuckle about it. But, yeah, speaking, uh, speaking of that, um, this is how I got to know you. Star Raccoon was setting up a fundraiser for you for a new camera. And yeah, yeah. it all worked out. And you even did a photo session with Hunt uh, yes, for that. Could yes. you tell us a little bit more about that wonderful fundraising and how it could be that so many wonderful people were supporting you? Oh, sure. Um, so I've been a, ph a professional photographer for like uh, 12 years now. Um, but I used to do it in North Dakota and it was a lot easier to get photography work there because there's so few people and I had a very specific skill set. Um, but when I moved to Columbus, Ohio, I didn't have access to that type of clientele anymore. So I would just go to cons and events as something to do, and I would just provide my photography services for free. Um, and like, even if a friend of mine says, hey, would you mind doing a photo shoot for me? I hardly charge them anything. Uh, I just I just do it because I like doing it. But um, one of the last conventions that I had shot was in Orlando, Florida, in the height of summer, and my camera was going from inside where it was air conditioned to outside in this humidity, and I kept doing that several times throughout the day, and my camera started failing because of it. And uh, eventually it got to the point where like, I couldn't use my camera anymore. So I decided, you know what, like it, uh, the other thing is, is I can't really afford to buy a camera. Um, so I just kind of threw together a, a, a coffee donation site and saying, hey, you know, give what you can. I don't expect much out of people in, in this sense. Like it's not their responsibility to donate to somebody but give what you can and um, people know that I don't charge anything for photos and I do this stuff for free. So I set that coffee up and I would get a couple donations here or there, which is fantastic. And then all of a sudden people, people like Hund and uh, Star Raccoon, they caught wind of me doing this and they're like, you know what, Shutter does great work. He's always putting himself out there. We need to support him. And I wanna get other people to rally behind him for this as well. And before I knew it, I had hit my goal and exceeded it. And it just kind of happened overnight and I'm completely floored about it. And uh, as soon as that happened, I made a joke to myself well, I guess I got to do, you know, more charity events for other people to, you know, like pay everyone back for what they just did for me. So I'm going to give it back to the community in the best way that I know how. But this is what I love seeing, that people are giving back to the community. And with that, the final question of tonight. Do you have any recommendations for people that just got into the fandom? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's a, a very big myth that goes around that says you have to have a fur suit in order to go to a fur meet or a fur con. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, you do not. Uh, as you can see, I have a head on, and I literally just got it yesterday, and it was the first time I had worn it at one of the meets. But everybody knew who I was because they're so used to seeing me at meets. And I do try and get everyone as involved as I can. Um, I encourage new people to show up at social gatherings like that because it's the only way you're gonna make friends. Particularly as an adult, it gets harder and harder to meet people and make friendships as an adult. So if you have an established event or a social gathering that's going on, um, just kind of power yourself through that social anxiety that you're dealing with. Message the person who's hosting the event and let them know right off the bat, hey, I want to come, but I have social anxiety. What can I do? I guarantee the person organizing that event will be like, no, it's cool. You show up, you come find me, we'll hang out. They'll make sure that you have a good time. And with that, I would like to thank you for your time. And 
I hope that somewhere in the future we might meet each other on one of your wonderful events. Um, so. Have a good one and stay awesome. Thank you. And with this, we arrived at the very end of the second episode of the sixth season of Digging Up Positivity. If you want to win this lovely t-shirt, respond in the comments saying you would like to have one. I will pick a winner in the next episode. But if you want to get one of yourself, be sure to check out my artwork, the seesaw, and not just for my shirt, but other things as well, like these amazing pins. But Besides my monthly show, I stream almost every Monday at 8 p.m. Central European time. Drop by and vibe with us uh, on some art and some chill beats. If you want to support this channel, do check out my artworks tea store or drop a coin at my subscribe star or Patreon like these amazing critters. Cosmic with a K, Els Deckers, Falconeo, Hansana, Ishnula, Katie, Manik, Tantru McNally, Taros, and Score Chaser. The next episode will be on March 25th, and I'm looking forward to see you there. And remember, love you all, stay awesome, and all the hugs. <laughs>